Well, Doug, it's probably ooh, eight, nine months since we had a look up here, had the, had the progression of what was Gawthorpe, and it's now the Bournefield Trade Centre, and my goodness, things have changed. First of all, before we look at that monstrosity over there, look at this. I mean, this, this is fantastic. Yeah, massive, massive changes. You know, since we came up in, uh, I think it was January last, when the project actually started on site, we've now come to this. So a lot of, lot of work's gone on in the, in the eight months. As you can see in front of us now, what was just open farmland, now we've got these two magnificent full-size Deso pitches uh, in front of us. So these are part plastic as well? They are, they are very, very similar to what we've got down at the stadium. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is replicate the uh, the stadium pitch with the training pitches. You know, it's so important that uh, what the players train on on a, on a weekly basis, they have the same experience on a, on a match day. So these are two full-size Deso pitches, which will be primarily the first team training pitches. Um, we've got a third pitch to the left of these these two here, which are currently being constructed. That's the sand one there being constructed. being constructed, still over there, is it? It is, yeah, that's another Deso pitch. Okay. That'll be the one that will be um, heated, will have under soil heating, uh, and that also will be the, um, the first team training pitch. So they will have, in essence, three pitches to, to use. 12 months ago, they had one, and that's all they had all the way through you know, the whole season, apart from inclement weather, and occasionally they came down to the stadium. They're now going to have three here with the, the, the top pitch as well. It's worth mentioning that's in addition to what was already here, which is the other side of the trees there, which is probably another three or four pitches over that side. Yeah, in the, in the biggest, biggest scheme of it all, you know, we, we, we worked on those pitches um, over the last two years. We've now got two full-size pitches, um, a sand fibre pitch, which is a, a high-quality surface, as well as the, uh, the traditional match pitch on the far side. We've got the three, so three full-size pitches there. We're also constructing two three-quarter pitches, just right across on the far side of the site. And right on the other side, we've got three mini pitches. So they're all part of the, the academy setup all part of the EPPP that we're, we're working to at the moment. Um, eventually, you know, we'll have seven full-size pitches on this side of the river. And that's with the aim, of course, of housing everybody in that building behind us, which is taking shape rather nicely. It is. Again, you know, when we came here last, we literally had a, a, a complete green site, nothing to show for it. But now it's risen out of the ground. We've got a magnificent building that we're really, really proud of at the moment and really excited to get into. Um, at this stage, we were about three, four months away from actually probably taking occupation of it. Um, so we're looking at maybe you know, February time to start putting the first department into that building. As we speak, this week, we're actually now installing the the sedum roof, which is a, a living roof, it's a, a green roof. And that's it, on the on the on the domed roof at the. At the that's right. The, yeah, and that's all integral end. to the planning conditions that we we had to adhere to. So you're going to have grass on the roof. It will be a grass roof. Okay. It won't need to be cut though, thankfully. I was going to ask if you to cut that one. That's a nice job. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Shall we go and have a look at it? Sounds good. Okay. Right. Well, we're close up now. We've got we're on the car park where the players are going to park when they come over the bridge. Where are I? Nice headwear, Doug. We can look at the building close up, and it's the scale of it is quite impressive. Just talk us through what we've got here on the building. Yeah, as you say, this is the, the car park, if you will, and the players will make their way into the main entrance, which is over on that side of the building. In front of you here is the main indoor 3G facility, so it's a 60 by 40 um, synthetic surface inside. Again, that's part of our EPPP requirements. The building to the right of it is the, is the accommodation facility, so it's split over two floors. So you've got all the changing rooms, the, the gyms, the um, pre-hab room, etc., and the laundry area on the ground floor. And on the first floor, you've got the office accommodation, the players' lounge, parents' lounge, and uh, other, other um, office areas that uh, we're required to be housed on one site. Okay, well, we're holding the work up, Doug, so let's go inside the 3G and have a look at the facility in there. Yeah. Well, it's a little bit dark in here, Doug, but you, you get a feel inside for the scale of this place. Just put this into context compared to the elite training centre we have at the turf and how much bigger this is? Well, this is 60 by 40 metres, and the Elite Training Centre is, is roughly about 35, 36 metres long by about 28, 29 okay. metres. So, you know, we're almost doubling the size of it. And this is will. an EPPP requirement, isn't it, to have something this size? It is. This is the EPPP e requirement for, for what we're looking for at the moment. So 60 by 40 is the minimum for CAT 2, CAT 2 status. So this, at the moment, complies for, for, for that criteria. Well, I couldn't ping a ball diagonally 60 yards, so I know it's going to be big <laughs> enough for me. Uh, yeah. Is this a first-team facility as well as 
covering the academy and the EPP requirements. Absolutely, yeah. It's not Obviously, too... if the weather's inclement outside, you can come in here. Yeah, that's right. With the pitch outside, we've got the, the undersoil heated. It prevents the, the first team having to use the, the stadium pitch, so they can stay on, the, on one site. But if the weather is that inclement or they want to do a different activity, then this facility will be perfect for them. It's a 3G surface, which is very similar to what we've got down at the training at the, um, at the ETC at the stadium and also the, the 3G pitch we've got on the other side of the river. So it'll be a similar surface, so they'll be used to that. So it'll work hand in hand. The first team, the dev squad, the youth team, right down to the academy to the youngest of players could use this facility. OK, the accommodation block links through to that. Shall we go in there and have a look at what essentially is where the players are going to live, eat, and breathe on a daily basis. Okay. Okay. Okay, Doug, here we are in the main reception of the new building. It doesn't look very palatial at the minute, but I'm getting to look a little bit more spectacular once it's all fitted out. Yeah, well, this, this is the main entrance, so everybody will come to this area on, if they're visiting the training ground, so it will have that wow factor. That's really important. First dedicated impression, reception? Dedicated reception. It'll be a man reception, so the whole concept of the training ground changes. It becomes a man facility, if you will. So everybody come through here, really nice environment. You can either take the, uh, the stairs to the right up to the first floor, or you're straight through into the into the players' environment. The and the players, environment. this is for the players' journey every day in, in through this door. Well, yeah, once you come through here, you can either come down to this area, which is more the the, the, the gym, the prehab, the medical room, etc. And obviously, we've got the um, their training, their changing facilities just, just beyond us as well. Well, let's go look at that. First, this is the interesting room to start with. There's, there's, there's three rooms connected here that I, I want to look at. The first one, this is the medical room, and this is probably, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing now, five, six times the size of the one that Ali's currently got on his team. Yeah, it is much bigger, but obviously the squad's bigger. We need to make sure we future-proof the building as well. But it's, we have a real opportunity. Of, we start from a clean sheet of paper, actually to plan the environment in the, in the precise way that we actually need it to work. Whereas previously, we've almost inherited buildings. Now, the next room I'm really excited about, and that's this way, Doug, because this connects the, the, the physio's room to the dressing room, and that is a swimming pool. It's a swimming pool with a little bit of a difference. It's a bit of a high-tech <laughs> swimming pool, shall we yeah, say. I, yeah, I, I, I'm being light-hearted there, but this is an important new facility. It is, club, yeah. isn't it? Tell us about this. This, this is the, it's going to be the hydrotherapy pool, so it's another form of, um, of, of rehabilitation, I guess. So in here, there'll be a treadmill within the pool, and also two plunge pools. So we'll have a hot, hot pool and, and a cold pool. Okay. It'll, it'll end up being a bit of a spa environment. So it wants to be a really nice environment. Still and a working warm. environment. Nice and warm. And warm, yeah. But it's a good feel when you walk into it. Okay, which leads us on to a very exciting room. This is the first team training facility, and it's cavernous. first impressions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cavernous is a good word for it, Doug. I mean, it is probably. I'm going to go twice the size of the one that they currently have, and probably three times yeah, the size three, of the dressing room. Three rooms. times the size. Again, as we said before, it's about future-proofing, but getting get the environment right. This is the, the lad's space, this is the player's space. It's their own personal space. Can have a five-a-side game in here. Yeah, we could mark it out, couldn't we, yeah. But, but this will look it, the part. I'm guessing everyone will have their own cubicles, it'll be, be nicely laid out and decored, yeah. and there'll be yeah. motivational signs, all the things you'd expect from a modern dressing room. Yeah, I know we're moving out of a very old building to a new one, but the, the principle of the old building works. They've got their own little area, their own personal space, so it will, We'll bring that across, that idea across into here, but on a much, much bigger scale. And yeah, it will be. It'll fit it out very, very nicely. It'll, it'll feel like a, an area that you want to come into. It's their place of work, mm. and we've got to make sure that you know, they, they feel comfortable in that. We'll go for a final walk down this corridor. You can just talk us through the rest of this corridor before we yep. then move up into the first level, if that's all right, Doug. Yep, absolutely. So down so. here, towards the back end, and of course, remember, guys, this is still a work in progress, so it is a little bit chaotic in here. We've got kit room. Kit room, yeah, that's right. So this will be the, the main club kit room, if you will. So it's not just the first team. It will be development squad and, and youth team. The items we have down at Turf Moor now, which gets transpo transported on a daily basis to and from Turf Moor to here, will all come in here. People come into the building, they go into the dressing room areas, they get the prehab and all the gym work. They come out, they pick up the, the kit, and then it's down to the boot room and out. Yeah, again, it's really, really important to get the, uh, the floor right and the design right. So we spend a long time planning this and making sure we do get it right. We've tweaked things on the way, you know, we've, we've actually consulted with everybody involved from the, from, right from the manager. The manager's had a, a, a real input into this and was very, very passionate about it and was keen to get it right. It's not just been one person designing it, you know, it's not just the architect and myself and others, it's, it's the whole club. Okay, I want to go and see a room with a view now. Sean Dadge's office, let's go. 
Okay, look, before we go to the manager's office, we're upstairs now. The, this area is split into two. Just explain the facility up here. Similar to the ground floor, we've, we've separated the, the building, so academy one end and the first team of their activities the other end. It almost flips this side, so this end of the building is, is the academy operation. So, whereas at the moment the academy department are based down at Turf Moor in the ETC, they will come up here fully and be relocated into this area. So. Um, you've got an open plan office area with various so offices. We've got a huge it. open plan office there, which will house all, all the staff, the academy, academy staff. staff. This area is um, a requirement for again the E2P. It's a players, um, a, a parents' lounge, sorry. Um, so this will house all the parents who come on, a, on an evening to the academy activities. Um, nice environment again. Sort of small kitchen area, viewing gallery, uh, and even an outside uh, balcony area that can overlook the uh, the 3G. Right here we go. This is it. It's where it all happens, the manager's office, Doug, and the staff, of course, they're going to be best in here. And the first thing to say is, they have got a room with a view. What a view that is. Yeah, it's pretty special, isn't it? And again, this, this was a really important part of the design, that you know, we, we utilise that view there. Because I don't think there's many training grounds in, uh, in the country that will be able to have that aspect. It's a fantastic view, is that. And for the managers to be able to have a nice, light, airy building with, mm. with that kind of view, and his ability to, to have his staff in here as well. I think that's quite important to, to show him that you know, yeah. he's, he's not a manager in isolation. He, he likes to work with, with his own staff very, very closely. So nice area. There'll be his, um, his assistant manager in here. I think Billy, Billy Mercer will be in here. Um, Tony Lachlan, and of course. Tony Lachlan, of course, yeah. So the before again. And if I'm the gaffer, similar. by the way, I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here looking right out of those pitches. Yeah, it's impressive, isn't it? Good, very, yeah. very good. So out of Sean's office, we go into what effectively is all his ancillary staff, all housed in one area. Doug, talk us through this area. Yeah, so this, this area is going to be the, the hub of the, the first team, etc., in the dev squad, um, as far as the, as say, the, the support staff, if you will. So in here you've got medical, sports science. All in separate individual yeah, rooms. So yeah. analytical, um, recruitment, then a, a an open plan, a small open plan, middle section, hot desking, etc. in here. So people like Ali Beatty, Mark Howard, uh, Adam Fairclough, etc. and uh, Martin Hodge will be, will be in this area. As we see from the growing team photo, the staff at the front, it's a, it's a big old operation that now. So it is. they all need these separate facilities. Definitely, yeah. We've, we've, we've factored that into the building itself, so there is a future proof there as well if we, as and when we do expand and uh, recruit again. There's uh, certainly facilities for them. And they're within touching distance, of course, of, of Sean in his office there. Then we go down this corner then, and, and then we've got what is effectively the piece de resistance of, this, of the players area, which is the players' lounge, which is a fantastic facility. I mean, this is, yeah. this is yeah. where they're going to live their lives, effectively. You've got a kitchen over there where they're going to be served from, but look at this, this fantastic space you've got here, Doug. Similarly with downstairs in their dressing room, it's their, it's their area, it's their domain, and this is a very important area for them to come in here, have the, have the lunch, etc., relax in, in their area that they feel comfortable with. And I think that's very, very important. So this will have a completely different feel to the rest of the building. You know, it'll be soft furnishings, it'll be a nice dining area, maybe some uh, recreation activities. Where's the dartboard going and where's the pool table exactly. going? Exactly, the there you things. go. That, that's the important bit. <laughs> and I think I'll be led by that, by, them, uh, by, by the, the players. <laughs> yeah, I would yeah, think yeah, so. Yeah. But yeah, it'll be, it'll be a fantastic feel to this when it comes in. Again, just a, almost a boutique kind of feel to it. You know? yeah, I think that's, yeah. that's the important bit we're trying to create. Whereas you go across the other side of the building, you've got the, the presentation lounge, which is where... Yeah, I was going to talk about that. You've got, you've got these little rooms here. and the, These, a bit like they are at Gawthorpe at the minute, spin-off rooms from the main players' lounge, and this is where the main analytics are going yeah, to take place, so right. the presentation rooms for yeah. players. Same principle as we've got across the other side of the river, exactly the same, but on a much, much grander scale. Yeah. And in here, this is where the manager will do his, his analysis of maybe the, the previous game, etc. Yeah. But again, it's quite a working environment. You know, it's, 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 uh, it's almost like a lecture theatre style in, in here. No yeah, watching the latest blockbusters then, it's all going to be analytical and work. I would think so, yeah. That's fine. Yeah. And then we can finally have a look out on the balcony, I think, and that's the great thing now. Go look at the balcony and see that great view out there. And, uh, Indeed. And that should finish off the tour, Absolutely. I think. Let's yeah. go. Ah, oh, this is more like it. This is more like it, Doug. Now then, this, it's a huge balcony as well, by the way. I mean, we're talking probably, what, 12, 15 feet wide? Yeah. Something like that. It's a big area. And all the rooms off here, the, the, the manager's office, of course, the player's lounge, they all look out onto this vista, which is, of course, going to be the first team pitch here, heated, and then beyond that, the two pitches we looked at right at the start of the tour, where the first team players are on there now training. That's right. Again, we, we thought long and hard about this on the, at the design stage, about how we could sort of bring the outside in. I think that's, that's really important. That aspect, again, we can actually 
you know, you bring into the main building. So yeah. even though it's a huge, huge balcony, and with, we don't, we're not blessed with the best of weathers, but because it's covered, we, we really do think this will get utilised heavily, mm. not just during the two or three months where we get some reasonable weather and temperatures. You know, the, the furniture we put out here um, and the, the environment we create, hopefully will be maybe eight, nine, ten months of the year we can use it. It's a great place from probably from an analytical point of view, yeah, from the, yeah. you know, anybody watching and, and observing. But you actually get a bit of a scale of what the size of the, the site is now. You know, we've, we've had 50 acres of doing very little for a number of years, many, many years. And now you can see as far as you can almost that every area is going to be covered with a, um, with a plane surface. Well, Sean's famous finally for not missing anything. He has his eyes everywhere from up here. And we'll leave you with this shot. He literally can see the whole Everything. of the new Barnfield Train Centre. Thank you, Doug. It's been a pleasure walking around. Nice. We'll look forward to coming back when it's all complete. Sounds good. Yeah, look forward to it.